On this installment of Creative Cabin Fever, I'm delighted to have Brona Kyo and Bird Woman on with me to talk about their upcoming show, which is this Sunday in Smock Alley. Now, this is really exciting for me because obviously there's this beautiful tangent about stand-up comedy and music and the fact that the three of us are obviously female comedians who also are in the music industry and I love that. So guys, tell me how this happened. It seems like the perfect Creative Cabin Fever moment, actually, because, you know... How did this happen? <clears throat> well, um, initially, the way we kind of started hanging out again, because we did meet years ago, um, was after Kelly kind of reached out saying she was feeling feeling the cabin fever pretty hard. Um, and Kel, do you want to elaborate on that? Well, uh, I actually had a concussion at the time. Do you remember that? I do, yeah. I was in a nuts place. You were, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, my brain has changed and I can't pretend that I'm fine anymore like I used to. And so I reached out on Facebook in a moment of desperation and just said, because where I live in Dunleary, I, I have lived here for a few years and I hadn't really made any close friends in this area. And um, I, brought, I was like, can somebody does somebody want to hang out in my area and brona reached out to me and we kind of knew each other through the music scene but we weren't friends we were acquaintances who would say oh there you are now that was about it like and we met up and like from the minute we start she met up with me outside my gaff i remember we had a nice pop you off i think you bought a tangle twe- teaser i think or a tangle tweezer no that's a hairbrush good choice <laughs> or something or was it could have been a solero anyway you arrived with ice pops and we sat and had them and we had a lovely chat. And so we came into a friendship. Uh, initially, I was like, she's fucking hilarious. Did I just curse? Are we allowed curse? You're allowed curse. It's my show. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Okay. <laughs> it's live. It's live. And uh, yeah, and then we just went from there. We just like, it was a, it was both vulnerable and hilarious in equal measure. So, and we've always had, you know, initially it was a friendship. But very quickly we were like, well, we're both creative. So let's do something creative with our fantastic creative brains and that was really how the show began you know through a series of voice notes and chats and yeah and we we were kind of between we were going to do a zine and then we mm. were gonna do a podcast and then we were gonna I don't know we had a million ideas so they've all kind of filtered into this one show which is um terrifying yes it is <laughs> Yeah, so this is going to be your first time, I guess, doing comedy, Brona. So that's that's a bit, you know, um, as I was explaining to you off stage, a lot of people who would know my show really, really, really well uh, would know that stand-up comedy effectively saved my life. I was in a really deep, depressive state and a friend of mine reached out and said, do you want to try stand-up? And I did a set about giving birth to my son um, yeah. three years ago. And I used to be terrified to get the bus and leave Waterford at that time. And we got a gig in Chennai. And that was my first time leaving Waterford on a bus. So stand-up comedy brought me out of Waterford and it brought me out of my shell. And I always tell everybody, just do it once and it will change your life. Like I never know how it's going to change your life, but do once and it will change your life. So I understand the nerves, but it will change your life. Yeah. That's so cool. I love that story. Yeah. I, I want to hear that set. Okay. I'll send you the YouTube video later. <laughs> I also gave birth, so I really want to hear that set. It's hilarious. Oh, sorry. <coughs> you, you can judge that yourself. <laughs> but that's amazing. Creativity, like we really couldn't stifle it in this moment in time. And we were all feeling cabin fever in our own ways. And we all sort of found ways to survive. Your wave really, really excites me. Like that's just beautiful. Yeah, it's exciting. I think we're we're both. Um, well, Kelly has a theatre background, um, so that's been amazing because, like, I have no idea what it means to block a show. I'm like, Bleh. um, so she's kind of been great at, at kind of arch architecting, architecting Arch- new word. I like it. <laughs> and new. Uh, yeah, and I'm really good at articulating, apparently. And um, yeah, no, so we've got the anchors we keep calling them anchors of like mm. the songs which is really nice because you know we're not completely without our comfort you know we'll both have guitars in our hands um so it's kind mm. of nice we've got these little planned moments 
to to sit on and then in between it's just like Improv. whatever, whatever mm-hmm. happens happens um and I know that just as a performer I've always used comedy in between my songs unintentionally and a lot of the times I'm very unaware of the fact that something is funny and I'm people laugh and I'm like okay um <clears throat> but it's real handy just to help with the nerves isn't it and you kind of end up just going into this like kind of a flurry and uh it just feels really nice to have everyone kind of together in a moment in a room um you know all kind of all kind of offering up that they are experiencing what you're saying by laughing because their laughing is them mm. saying yes me too you know um and people want to laugh right. i find like people especially irish audiences they're dying for a laugh you know Brona did a set at the Ruby Sessions there a couple of weeks ago and she had the audience in absolute stitches, you know, like... Yeah, let's not speak too much about that. No, it was, really, <laughs> it was really, really funny. <clears throat> and it was just like, you know, we, we were talking about this in rehearsals where Brona was like, I mean, I've never done comedy. And I was like, but you're naturally funny. You know, you're a naturally funny person. She's like, well, I don't know that. And I'm like, yeah, but you are. You know, <laughs> it's like, you're funny. And mm. so we don't have to... I suppose it's just really trusting that whatever we're doing in the moment is going to be enough, you know, because we're having a great time and really we're making this show for ourselves. Like we're not making this show for anybody else, you know, and I think it's definitely the first time in my life that I've made art just for me. You know, like this is just a friendship that we're like, feck it, let's do this and like go out of our comfort zone. <clears throat> and like Brona and my music is that we write separately to comedy stuff is like quite serious music, quite personal, quite emotional, you know, really deep. I would say brave, mm-hmm. sharing really, really intense emotions, you know, and this is a nice break from that, you know, because that can be a lot. I'm like, I haven't, I haven't gigged now in two years. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, I have been had like one foot in and out of a panic attack for the last about three weeks, um, but managed to keep the foot out, never kind of fell in. Thankfully, for, thank God for CBD oil. Uh, but like, you know, I think for me, this is like the best possible way that I could be coming back out onto the scene. Absolutely, you know? I agree. Like, obviously, I discovered both of you during this moment in time virtually. So I discovered you, Birdwoman, on Mod Words when you did a performance there um, mm-hmm. streaming. I discovered Brona through Sea Witch. I don't know if she knows this. And then I had the luck to actually go up to the Grand Social a few weeks ago because I decided to try get out of Waterford in case I got scared of buses again. And <laughs> I came up to meet a few of my friends and I loved that performance. It was amazing to see you in the flesh doing what you do really well. The fact that you you guys can now take what you usually do which is quite serious and add to comedy is brilliant most comedians i find usually have a very very dark and that's what makes their hilarious light right because if it wasn't for the fact that my brain is so dark and twisted i wouldn't be half as funny as i am you know trauma response Woo-hoo. <laughs> big tea big tea yeah we we talk about the big tea in our show all right yeah oh. mention. Mm. trauma bonding Look at us. <laughs> but yeah, that's brilliant. I, I really think this is going to be something amazing. And art should be made for fun and for ourselves. Like everything yeah. else that comes, that's a catharsis and an extra that's brilliant for ourselves. But we're not in charge. Once we put it out there, it's somebody else's. Like it's up for interpretation. It's up to other people's feedback and, and views, you know. Yeah, like we updated our blurb recently to like, you know, a new comedy music show by two musicians who have no idea if anybody will find it as funny as they do. Because that's the truth. Like, Because Brown is really like, but will they find it funny? And I'm like, of course they will. It's hilarious. And she's like, we don't know that. And I'm like, well, you're not wrong. I mean, we don't know that. But like, I have a few friends that I know are coming. And I, I know for a fact, like we grew up together on some of the, It's kind of a bit of absurd comedy, some of it, you know, a bit nonsense comedy. You know, like definitely, yeah. There's definitely like what's what's the um oh, my dad kill me for not knowing what I'm saying right now. You know what I'm saying? Holy Grail, Monty Python. Monty, Monty Python. Python. There's some real Monty Python moments. Will we tell about the um the vessel of oddities? Yeah. Will we sing? Will we sing? The song? <gasps> Do what? I get a pre-show exclusive? Hang on, hang on, ha, hang ha. on. Ha. 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 Where is it? Hey, do you want to hear another it? weird parallel, Brona? 
yeah one of my other comedy sketches is called the bexicon where i invent my own words because that's one of my strong points as a kid so when you earlier made up a, your own word by accident that ties into our stuff again this is brilliant Ooh. love it <laughs> love it that's the magic going on here hang on let me get a vessel or no an oddity <clears throat> So basically, the vessel of oddities is like um, a, a little phrase we came up with for where we put little instruments we're using during the show, like little percussion instruments like this. You know, like random stuff. So at some point through the show, because it's a theatre space, you want to use the space. You know, you don't just want to be on a gig like where you just have your instruments. You want to walk around a bit. So <clears throat> we have a limited set, but that's one, one of our main props is the vessel of oddities that we go to to take stuff out. Um, we kind of came up with a little song for it that was a bit of a joke but then in one of our kind of two, two rehearsals ago Brona came up with a little riff and we were like oh wow oh hang on this has escalated and this is now a feature you know so it happens like twice through the show where we sing it but uh will we do it go there now Kelly huh <clears throat> one two three four vessel of oddities there's a love of oddities. There's a love of oddities. There's a love of oddities. That's Well, actually, <clears throat> that's not yeah. normally how we do it. How we normally do it is in harmony with Brona playing guitar. And what took place there was not that. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. But so, in fairness, you're just doing that. this like... <laughs> Let's try all three of us, okay? <laughs> oh nice and maybe we'll come in after the four this time just to just to mix it up ready okay one two three four vessel of oddities vessel of oddities vessel of oddities yeah i think the i think the delay is really working on our favor there is a delay yep. so the show for anyone listening the show is better than that I actually don't know. I think that could be the crux of exactly what we're doing, which is just providing moments of extreme chronic awkwardness for people to have to just sit in. <laughs> and I think that is beautiful because, Thank you know, you. <laughs> oddities and awkwardness is are what life is all about. Big time. Like there is a moment in the script where we're like disgusting, awkward moment where it's like, let's just hold it longer than it needs to be held. Yeah. Just because we're just, you know, I definitely think in the, during the pandemic, we've all gotten a bit too used to comfort, like hiding out in our comfort zones and our houses and our, you know, it's like, ah. and we've all got social anxiety now, I think in ways that not everybody used to have. So it's like, it's like, let's all come and be uncomfortable together. You know, like, let's do that. And <laughs> it's just wobbling beside you as you're speaking. It's going to be great fun. This sounds like a really, really great show, and it's so important not only to create but also push yourselves out of your boundaries of comfort. So, what you guys are doing is just fantastic. I think everyone should go into the link that I'm going to post there and buy tickets for Sunday's show because, realistically, you know. This is a huge undertaking by these two wizards who have decided to come together in a moment in time where nothing is happening and create comedy gold with music attached with their darkness. That brings them into their light. I think that's gorgeous. Hilariously gorgeous. That was really nice. That was lovely. You want to put our blurbs? <laughs> uh, I, I do PR on the side. We can talk off camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we find her earlier and sell that a PR? You, look, uh, people say that sometimes. They say, where have you been all our life? And, and then they run away. But that's part of my, <laughs> my big tea. I had one of those recently. <laughs> Guys, this has been amazing. Best of luck on Sunday. You were going to slay it, I've no doubt. Uh, Brona, uh, the biggest fear I think anyone has is timing in comedy. I have a few tips. Like People are just like, oh, well, I know my thing, but what if I get my timing off? That comes with practice. Uh, you're going to be absolutely fine. You're hilarious. I've seen you. You're funny. There's a flow to you. It's intuitive. You just trust yourself and your gut and everything as you feel it. Take a few breaths in between things because that was one of my biggest tips because I was like, oh, wait till they finish laughing before the next line because otherwise it just kind of, you know, they lose out on stuff. But um, I learned that from Mrs. Meisel. Um, Mrs. Meisel. One of the things I love most about comedy, actually, can I tell you a little anecdote? 
Please do. So there's this Buddhist monk, right? And he tells a joke and everyone laughs, okay? And tells the same joke exactly 20 seconds later and nobody laughs and everybody looks at him like he's mental, okay? And he goes, why didn't you laugh? It's the same joke. It was funny the first time. And everyone's just like quizzically looking at him. He's like, well, you've no problem reliving your pain constantly. So why is your joy not re-enjoyable the next time so fast? And that's what comedy is. It's practicing joy over and over and over again in the form of jokes. Hmm. A little harsh. I'm getting all those little like shivery It is joy. It is joy. Comedy is joy. It brings the joy. But it's so true. Like you say the same joke twice and you're not a comedian. Everyone thinks you're mental. But you'll happily talk about your trauma or your grief over and over again and relive that sadness. Let's all relive our happiness constantly. For some reason, when I talk about my trauma over and over again, that seems to be when people laugh. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God. Or, you know, you're just having a conversation like it's supposed to be just a fun, joyful conversation. You really don't think that what you're saying is that weird or upsetting. And someone looks at you like, did that actually happen? You're like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's funny huh and they're like no that's yeah. that's <laughs> i used to always i you know when you, you when you're asking people like you know when you say oh you know when this normal thing happens and like, you experience it in this way and it's real common and you're expecting everyone to go oh yeah absolutely i so often say that no one replies like no one feels the same like i used to get this urge to pull all my teeth out and like deep clean my gums and then like pierced them all back in and it felt like a real satisfying thing and I was like you know and everyone was like yeah. <laughs> that's just deep cleaning like I mean people do that with veneers I don't think what you're suggesting is that weird not weird but not common no but I like unusual people lateral thinkers the ones that think outside the box my god life is so boring when you're ordinary always strive to be extraordinary everybody else Absolutely. is taken I think that's why we hit it off so much because both of us, we could both just throw really random things out there and the other one would be real, oh, that's fun, you know? And it was like, oh, cool, I can be the really weird version of myself with this person. Mm. Um, You know, like that. I think that's a big part of why the show is a bit gas. I mean, we think it's great. It's unbridled mania. (laughs) Unbridled. And we need that. It's a place for us to not have to pretend to not be completely and utterly batshit insane. Mm. I'm batshit passionate like people misunderstand that all the time right they're like oh she's crazy no I'm really passionate yeah yeah Sorry, I, Kenny, I, didn't mean to huh? I didn't mean to lump you into my batshit crazy there <clears throat> oh I, I sure I live with an 11 year old who tells me I'm mom you know you're you're a weirdo you're such a weirdo because I just go around the house doing mad stuff and she's like I'm like I know it's deadly isn't it and like she's trying to annoy she's trying to be like but I'm like, secretly, she just loves it. You know what I mean? Like, she's having a great time with me as her mother. You know what I mean? Like, it's uh, it's, it's really fun having a preteen who has to pretend to hate you because it makes <laughs> you enjoy your madness even more, you know? I can't wait till Keanu Dante is that age. Like, he's five right now, so he's enjoying my madness very much. And we do, like, great creative stuff together and we play and stuff. Like, the other day, I, I turned up to school with a bouquet of flowers because it was Valentine's Day, like, do you know? And I was like, would you be my Valentine there on my knees in the schoolyard? And he was like, <gasps> and all the other kids were like, why is she so weird? And I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's I- amazing. But yeah. yeah, I just, yeah. The world needs more magic and magical people and people who are just themselves. So it's a pleasure to meet you both. I would urge everybody. Yeah, I love the bear. See, like we're all about our little bit. And there was that zig and zag thing today. Oh, yeah. Where's your, where's you got... your bear? <laughs> oh, oh, no. Do you ever just feel like you met two kindred spirits for no bear? <laughs> <reason>? <laughs> That's how we felt when we met. Guys, so nice. Sunday is this gig. You guys, everyone watching who find them as inspirationally funny and creative as I do, get tickets, go see them in Smock Alley. It's going to be unreal. Unreal. Six o'clock, the boys' school. Uh, yeah, part of Seen and Heard Festival of New Work. We need to give that festival a mention because it's a great little festival for trying out new material and it's really like bring it here don't, it doesn't have to be perfect try it out and uh take it on to bigger and better places afterwards if it's the right thing to do 
Um, maybe this show will, ever, will only ever be done once. Maybe we'll go on a mad tour. We don't know yet. It's all to play for. Step by step, we get where we're going. The journey's the fun part. The destination takes care of itself, ladies. Best of luck on Sunday. Thank you so much for this interview. I'm going to stop recording now and we can go back to our chat. Okay, thanks a million.